Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance EV. Today we're heading back into the Porsche engine bay. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. And today I'm gonna start to take you on a bit of a journey. So we're going back into the, the engine bay of the Porsche to try and figure out how the Nissan Leaf motor is actually going to fit. Um, I've been in there before with uh, measuring tape and it, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty tight fit. Um, but now it's time to actually get serious about it. And I wanted to bring you guys along on the journey. It's going to be probably a bit frustrating at times trying to, to figure out how we're going to get basically a square peg into a round hole um, with the the motor that we've got here and the the space we've got to work with but hopefully it'll give you some insight into the the challenges that we need to overcome when doing an EV conversion so yeah let's get on with it so one thing that struck me as I was moving on to the next stage of the process and I ended up putting the uh, motor that I'm going to be using near the motor I'd taken out was the considerable size difference between the electric motor from the Leaf and the internal combustion engine from the Porsche. box mount I haven't yet decided don't know 100% if I'm going to use it or not but I figure if it's in place then I can better visualize um, what we're going to need to do so let's get this back up Alright, not fully torqued up or anything, but secure enough for uh, mocking things up. Now, let's go take a look at the electric motor. There's a slightly different view. Here we have the original internal combustion engine and gearbox. And here we have what we're replacing it with. Alright, so here's the space we've got to play with. Let's see if we can fit something in there. So overall width-wise, I don't think we've got a problem. It'll fit in the space. I think the issue is going to be towards the front, um, where the mounting frame, I guess, for want of a better word, for the inverter, is, I think, going to foul on the body. So we may have to do some modification to the motor to get it to work. Okay, so we've got the motor and gearbox, so this is its complete size. Uh, Kind of sitting in the engine bay space it's much lower than it needs to be um, but it's starting to give me an indication of where things are and to be honest maybe i was a little bit too optimistic before about how easy it would fit in the space so width wise we're actually fine um, in terms of structural components of the car 
it fits. Um, these suspension uprights and the where they connect to uh, on the body and on the chassis, they're all fine. And again, the frame rails, it fits in between. The challenge comes when we start to look at the um, other parts of the body. So what we've got here is the two kind of indentations for the rear seats. So they just, um, yeah, they're really impinge on the space and the gearbox fit in here fine. And I'll, I'll show you the motor compared to the gearbox in detail in a moment. But um, because of the orientation of this, the fact that it's basically transversely mounted, um, it's not making things easy, uh, especially with the pieces that exist here for allowing the inverter to be um, placed on top of the motor or secured on top of the motor. So I'm going to have to play around a bit um, and just look at different orientations and see what we can do to get this to work. So here we've got the leaf motor and gearbox lined up alongside the petrol engine and gearbox. As you can see, overall it is much, much smaller. The challenge that we're having is just some of those specific dimensions. So the engine takes up the main part of the engine bay, there's plenty of space in there. But where we're trying to fit the gearbox or, or the mo electric motor is where the gearbox was. And the gearbox itself is actually relatively slim and compact, certainly at the top anyway. And it's only really at the point where the drive is coming out of it that it has any width. And unfortunately for us, that's almost the narrowest part of the leaf motor. So on the leaf motor we've got a drive shaft coming out this side and then going through and out this side. And on the gearbox we had the drive shafts coming out either side. Um, and then any of the width is actually lower, lower down. In the leaf motor on the other hand is overall blockier and as I said earlier it's actually mounted transversely so the rotation is this way on this one and then the gearbox transfers it to the something similar just at a different speed whereas with this one the rotation is going that way and then within the gearbox it gets transferred to this way for the drive to the wheels um, which means they sit rather differently So I'm not discounting any options here. Um, the ideal situation is that we use the gearbox that came with the leaf, um, but if that's not gonna work, we'll find another way. Uh, if we don't use the gearbox that came with the leaf, it might give us the option to mount the motor longitudinally rather than transversely, in which case the space constraints will be different um, until I get it try it inside the engine bay I won't know <laughs> if it actually makes any difference but I'm just having a look at it here next to the gearbox and with the motor backed up as far as the gearbox goes back so that's including the mounting point on the gearbox um, it is clear of the point at which drive needs to come out so that would need to align with the um, where the axles are because the wheels aren't going to be moving so we don't really have a choice about that and there is some space there um, it's not a phenomenal amount of space but it is it is something what I need to figure out now is whether the space here um, 
is enough to have something in between the motor and the gearbox, like a, a diff or something like that. The challenge that I see is potentially the um, the fact that you're going to need a, a coupler in place here as well, which would um, potentially mean that the you know the diff can't start until somewhere about here, in which case we're we're talking about pretty small space. Um, I think what I need to do is get dolly built up that will raise the um, the motor up a bit and um, get it into the into the bay and see what space we've got to work with. So that was an interesting few hours of work. Um, you know, when I first started this project, I'd hoped that it, there'd be enough space to easily fit the Nissan Leaf motor into the Porsche. Um, as it turns out, there is a lot of space, just not where I need it to be for the, the shape of the motor and the, the orientation of it and the way the gearbox works. Uh, it's, yeah, it's proven a little bit more challenging than I thought it was going to be. Um, but to be honest, that's, that's half the fun, you know, we, we take on these things to, to give ourselves a bit of a challenge and to try and, and figure them out. Um, this is, this is going to take me a little bit longer than I'd probably originally hoped. Um, I'm going to have to mock up, you know, with the motor in place, a few different options for, for fitting it and just see what, what actually seems to work. Um, and then we'll go back to figuring out once we've got the motor in place, how we're going to get the, the drive to the wheels. Um, I hope you'll join me next time uh, as we continue on this this little mini journey. Um, and if you know if you've enjoyed this this video, please you know click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Uh, but till then, till next time, uh, thanks for watching.